Many people and places use the term post-mortem in regards to a discussion that happens after an event or a project to discuss how things went, good or bad. Post-mortem, after death. So why talk about it? As far as we currently know, it is impossible to go back in time and change anything. And anyway, if we did, if we could, sci-fi stories tell us that we would cause a rift in the space-time continuum. So what if we look at it as before life, prenatal, if you will. I'm not just saying that because I'm pregnant. <laughs> or better yet, to stick to the analogy, what if we look at it as part of the life cycle? This is the approach I've been taking over the last three years with the, what we in the theater program here refer to as the post-production discussion. When I started in this position about three and a half years ago, it's not that no one was talking after or between our theatrical productions or projects. In fact, people were talking a lot, just not in a productive way. Words were said, but conversation was not happening. Someone talking or complaining with a friend in a dorm room or between classes about something that had happened. Maybe a shakeup of who did what would fix the problem. A hope that things would be different with the next project. As if the next project was totally disconnected from what came before. But with our productions, as is with teams and companies and organizations around the world, people continue to work with each other on new projects as old ones reach completion. They're not completely independent of each other. One part of the cycle may be over, but new, but the life of that program, department, or organization lives on. So how do we create a space for a conversation that bridges that past with the future? How do we create a space where people feel safe to share their thoughts on the future, sorry, on the past to better the future? How can people feel comfortable enough to share their ideas and thoughts, knowing that they will be working with the same people that were part of the very project of which they're pointing out the flaws and imperfections. These are the questions that danced in my mind. So while on vacation, I observed a discussion that my mother, a minister, led with a group within her congregation. The process she used for setting up and facilitating conversation was one I'd never seen before. It welcomed input from all parties before discussion even began, and then used that input to guide the path of discussion. I decided to try it out in the late winter of 2011. Knowing that I did not want to call it the post-mortem, I announced that I would host a post-production discussion. Over time, the announcement has come to include, all are welcome, but no one is required to attend. We will talk about the, uh, this will be an opportunity for a productive conversation about how things went during the production period. We'll talk about the way things may have gone, maybe not as well as hoped, or things that needed work. There, this will be a discussion, but it will not be a decision-making meeting. I will stay and facilitate until everyone is done talking, and there will be snacks. I had no idea if anyone would even show up to the first one, but they did. Once folks enter the room for this, these discussions, I lead them through a process based off the one that I had observed. It involves sticky notes and Venn diagrams, both things that I thoroughly enjoy. I'm sure the process would make an interesting conversation at one of these talks at another time, but the groupings created by these Venn diagrams then become topic areas for the discussion. And we'll note that for a while, I collected the sticky notes and created the groupings myself. Uh, in more recent versions of these discussions, I actually took a different approach and had the participants create the grouping themselves. So we have participants attending who have chosen to participate. We have agenda topics provided by these active participants. And now, we discuss. The participants decide which areas to start with and for how long they'd like to address each topic. As a facilitator, it is my job to keep things on track with the purpose of the overall discussion. Sometimes that means recognizing that certain topics could be an entire meeting to themselves. Sometimes it's reminding people of our inability to time travel. When there's nothing left to discuss, the conversation comes to a close. Now, through our discussion, someone has been taking notes on the conversation. At the conclusion of these meetings, the notes get sent out to everyone who attended, even if not for the full duration. 
So we've had a gathering of active participants in a room to discuss topics of their choosing. This in itself is a wonderful thing. Words were said and conversation was had. People have voiced their thoughts and concerns and have been heard by the group. But how does this fit into our idea of this type of discussion being part of a life cycle? How does this do anything to move us from the past to the future? Well, three years and 17 of these meetings later, our post-production discussions have become several things. A known and anticipated outlet for concerns and ideas, a chance to revisit and reassess the things we've tried, a place to be heard, and a learning and growing tool. People continue to show up. The numbers may vary, but there is still a desire to have these conversations. Throughout the production process, it is not uncommon to hear, I want to remember to bring this up at the post-production discussion. Or, we're good for now, but I'd like to discuss this more at the post-production discussion. Instead of getting hung up on hashing out something now, especially with a short production period, folks know that there will be a time to look at the details and brainstorm alternate future solutions. Now that these have become a thing, these conversations can be a place to revisit what we've tried and, and reassess. We can keep trying different ways to be successful and check in between productions to see what worked and what didn't. How can we alter or tweak what we did in the most recent production to be more successful next time? And we all need a place to be heard, whether it's a new idea or concern or just an explanation. Any project in its very nature consists of people with different skills and focuses coming together to complete a task. Because of this, each member of the team has a different experience. And though working in a group, may feel a separation due to that individual experience. Sometimes all someone needs is to know that others know about and understand the experience, what they see, and what matters to them. For these reasons, the post-production discussions have become a tool for learning and growing, both as individuals and as a team and community. The questions in these meetings include not only how can we do better, but how can I do better? Now that these meetings continue to be part of an ongoing process, patterns and cycles have emerged. Topics and focuses shift over time and sometimes come back around if they have not been in discussion for a bit. Especially in the higher education setting, which is inherently fluid, the process is not linear. A way of approaching this cyclical nature while also including the broader community who, for whatever reason, may not have been able to attend one of these meetings is through communicating and sharing the ideas that have been shared. The conversation between attendees has turned more towards, next time around, let's try this. I also now compile the notes from these meetings and keep them in a binder in my office. I've actually had folks come and peek through the pages and see what others thought worked, didn't work, might work in the future. I may make it quite clear that these meetings themselves are not for decision making, but that in no way means that solutions cannot come out of the dialogue and afterthought. In fact, several solutions have been found through these meetings. But the process has been more organic through continued thought and conversation while engaged in the next project. When we create a space in which people feel safe to share their thoughts and bring ideas, we turn this in-between space in between phase into an integral part of the process. It is no longer one separate thing followed by another, but a continuing life cycle. In other words, we are changing the focus from after the death of a project to using past projects to fuel a new future. We are breathing new life back into the idea of the postmortem conversation. Thank you.